Ever wondered what it's like to live like royalty? The King of Qatar's daily routine involves things most of us can't even imagine. Private jet commutes anyone, but that's just the beginning of his extraordinary life. When we talk about the King of Qatar, we're talking about a level of wealth that's hard to comprehend. We're not just dealing with millions here, we're talking billions, hundreds of billions. The Al Thani family, Qatar's royal family, has a collective wealth of $335 billion. That's more money than some countries' entire economies. So what does someone do with that kind of cash? Well, let's just say the King of Qatar doesn't exactly clip coupons or shop the clearance rack. From a fleet of supercars that would make any car enthusiast drool to private islands that make your vacation spots look like sandboxes, we're about to take a tour through a world where money is no object and luxury knows no bounds. A garage fit for a king. When it comes to the king of Qatar's car collection, we're not talking about your average millionaire's garage filled with a few Ferraris and Lamborghinis. No, this is a whole different level of automotive excess that would make even the most dedicated car enthusiast weak at the knees. The Royal Garage houses some of the rarest and most expensive vehicles on the planet, each one a masterpiece of engineering and design. Let's start with the crown jewel of the collection, the Bugatti Devo. This isn't just any supercar, it's a limited edition beast with only 40 ever made. Priced at a cool $5.8 million, the Devo boasts a monstrous 1,500 horsepower engine that can propel it to a top speed of 380 kilometers per H. But the Devo isn't alone in its Bugatti glory. The King also owns the legendary Bugatti Veyron, once the fastest production car in the world, and its successor, the Bugatti Chiron, which can hit speeds of up to 420 km per H. But the Royal Garage isn't just about raw speed, it's also home to some of the most exclusive and rare cars ever produced. Take the LaFerrari Aperta, for example. Only 200 of these open-top hybrid supercars were ever made, and you can bet the King has one. This Italian masterpiece can go from 0 to 100 km per H in under 3 seconds, which is probably faster than most of us can say, I can't afford that. Speaking of Italian masterpieces, the King's collection wouldn't be complete without the Ferrari Monza SP2. This car is a throwback to the golden age of motorsport, offering a nostalgic yet modern driving experience with its powerful 12-cylinder engine. It's the kind of car that makes you wonder if time travel is possible, at least for the uber-wealthy. But it's not all Italian flair in the Royal Garage. The collection also features some German engineering marvels. The Mercedes-AMG 6X6, a high-performance off-road vehicle, sits proudly among its supercar siblings. This six-wheeled monster looks like it could conquer any terrain from the deserts of Qatar to the surface of Mars. And for those times when the king wants to be chauffeured in the utmost luxury, there's the Rolls-Royce Phantom. This isn't just a car, it's a mobile palace, offering a level of comfort and opulence that most of us can only dream about. But perhaps the most impressive vehicle in the collection is the Lamborghini Sian FKP37. This hybrid supercar named Sian, which means flash of lightning in Bolognese dialect, represents Lamborghini's first foray into hybrid technology. With only 63 units in existence, it's rarer than a humble billionaire. Its V12 engine is boosted by a 48-volt electric motor, creating a driving experience that's truly electrifying. Now, you might be wondering about custom modifications or unique features. Well, when you're the king of Qatar, you don't just buy a car off the lot. Each of these vehicles is likely customized to his exact specifications from bespoke interiors crafted from the finest materials to custom paint jobs that probably cost more than most people's houses. But the details of these modifications are kept under wraps, much like the total value of this incredible collection. One thing's for sure, the King of Qatar's garage is less of a parking space and more of a museum of automotive excellence. It's a testament to engineering prowess, design brilliance, and of course the purchasing power of royal oil wealth. For us mere mortals, it's a glimpse into a world where price tags are just suggestions and the impossible becomes possible. Floating palaces, the royal fleet, while we've seen the king's impressive garage on land, his taste for luxury doesn't stop at the shoreline. The royal family of Qatar has a penchant for floating palaces that make even the most extravagant cruise ships look like rubber duckies in a bathtub. These aren't your average yachts. We're talking about vessels that could probably house a small country's entire population in the lap of luxury. The crown jewel of the royal fleet is the Al Lusse, a yacht so massive and opulent it's practically its own sovereign nation. This behemoth of the sea stretches an incredible 404 feet long. That's longer than a football field. But size isn't everything, right? Well, in this case, it comes with a price tag to match. 
the Al-Lusal is valued at a staggering $500 million. That's right, half a billion dollars floating on water. But what makes this yacht worth more than some countries' GDPs? For starters, it was built by the German shipyard Lursen, known for creating some of the most luxurious vessels in the world. The exterior design was handled by March & White, an English design house that specializes in making things look ridiculously expensive. Step inside the Al Lusai, and you'll find yourself in a floating five-star resort. It boasts a spa, because why not get a massage while cruising the Mediterranean? There's a movie theater for those boring nights at sea, a beauty salon to keep looking fresh for all those yacht parties and multiple indoor pools. Because one pool is never enough when you're royalty. But the Al Lusail isn't a one-yacht show. The royal fleet also includes the Katara, which is just one meter shorter than its bigger sister. At only $400 million, it's practically a budget option for the royal family. The Katara isn't just a pretty face, it's designed for serious entertaining. With 18 cabins, it can accommodate 34 guests and has room for a crew of 95. That's right, 95 people to make sure your champagne glass is never empty. The Katara's interior was styled by Alberto Pinto, a design house known for creating spaces that make millionaires feel poor. Think rare woods, exquisite marbles and furnishings that probably cost more than most people's houses. And let's not forget the helicopter pad, because sometimes you just need to chop her in for dinner. Both these yachts come equipped with every imaginable luxury. State-of-the-art gyms to work off all that gourmet food, beach clubs for when you want to pretend you're on a normal beach, and enough water sports equipment to outfit an Olympic team. But perhaps the most unique feature of these floating palaces is their sheer exclusivity. You can't just book a night on these yachts. They're reserved for the royal family and their equally wealthy friends. It's a world most of us will never see, where the ultra-rich play on floating islands of luxury, far from the prying eyes of the common folk. In the grand scheme of things, these yachts are more than just expensive toys. They're symbols of power, prestige, and the kind of wealth that most of us can't even fathom. They're floating embassies, hosting dignitaries and making political statements without saying a word. Because when your yacht costs half a billion dollars, it speaks for itself. Soaring in style, royal helicopters. We've seen the king's impressive land and sea vehicles, but what about when he needs to take to the skies? When your royalty, sometimes even a private jet, isn't enough to get you where you need to go. That's where the Royal Helicopter Fleet comes in. These aren't your average choppers. They're flying fortresses of luxury and technology that make Air Force One look like a toy plane. The King of Qatar doesn't just have one or two helicopters. He's got a whole fleet of them, each serving a specific purpose. From quick hops between palaces to official state business, these helicopters are always ready to take off at a moment's notice. But what exactly makes up this aerial armada? Let's start with the crown jewel of the collection, the Augusta Westland AW139. This isn't just any helicopter, it's a flying limousine. With a price tag of around $14 million, it's the kind of aircraft that makes even millionaires do a double take. The AW139 is known for its speed and range, perfect for when the king needs to zip across the country for an important meeting, or maybe just to catch a quick lunch at his favorite seaside palace. But the royal fleet isn't just about luxury. When it comes to official duties, the king needs something a bit more robust. Enter the Sikorsky S92, a beast of a helicopter that's often used by heads of state around the world. This bad boy can carry up to 19 passengers and has a range of over 500 nautical miles. It's like having a flying conference room, perfect for when the king needs to conduct some high-level negotiations mid-air. Now you might be thinking, sure, these helicopters are nice, but what makes them fit for a king? Well, that's where the special modifications come in. These aren't your off-the-shelf models. Each helicopter in the royal fleet has been customized to meet the exact specifications of the Qatari royal family. Let's talk luxury first. The interiors of these helicopters are more like five-star hotel suites than aircraft cabins. We're talking hand-stitched leather seats, gold-plated fixtures and wood paneling that probably costs more than most people's cars. The King's personal AW139 is rumored to have a fully functional office space, complete with satellite communications and a minibar. Because why should work stop just because you're flying? But it's not all about comfort. Security is a top priority for any royal, and these helicopters are no exception. They're equipped with state-of-the-art defense systems that would make a military general jealous. Advanced radar jamming technology, missile detection systems, and bulletproof windows are just the start. Some of the helicopters in the fleet are even said to have their own parachute systems, just in case things really go south. 
The pilots of these Royal Helicopters aren't your average flyboys either. They're highly trained professionals, many with military backgrounds, who undergo rigorous security checks before they're allowed anywhere near the controls. After all, when you're responsible for flying around one of the wealthiest and most powerful people in the world, you need to be at the top of your game. But perhaps the most impressive thing about the King's helicopter fleet isn't the technology or the luxury, it's the sheer convenience it provides. Need to check on a construction project in the desert? No problem, just hop in a helicopter. Want to have dinner on your private yacht but don't feel like dealing with traffic? The chopper's ready when you are. It's the kind of freedom that only comes with unimaginable wealth and power, airways fit for royalty. We've seen how the King of Qatar travels by land, sea and helicopter, but what about when he needs to cross continents? That's where his private airline comes in. Yes, you heard that right. Not just a private jet, but an entire airline dedicated to royal travel. It's called Qatar Amiri Flight, and it makes first class look like economy. Founded in 1977, Qatar Amiri Flight isn't your average airline. It's exclusively for the use of the royal family and top government officials. No frequent flyer miles here, folks. The fleet consists of about 14 aircraft, each costing over $400 million. That's more than the GDP of some small countries. But what exactly does $400 million buy you in terms of air travel? Well, let's take a look at one of the standout aircraft in the fleet, the Airbus A340-300. This beast is valued at up to half a billion dollars, and it's not hard to see why. Upon entering, you're greeted with gold trimmings, plush carpets, and crystal chandeliers. It's like walking into a flying palace. One of the most interesting features of these royal jets is the majlis. It's an Arabic term for a sitting room, but on these planes, it's more like a luxury lounge where the royals can conduct business or entertain guests at 40,000 feet. Imagine closing multi-million dollar deals while cruising over the Atlantic. That's just another Tuesday for the King of Qatar. But the luxury doesn't stop there. The private suites on board have full-size beds and ensuite bathrooms. It's like having your own five-star hotel room in the sky. And forget about airplane food. Meals on board are prepared by personal chefs, ensuring a fine dining experience no matter where you're flying. Entertainment systems on these jets are top-notch, making long flights feel like a breeze. State-of-the-art communication systems ensure the royal family remains connected while in the air. There are even private offices and conference rooms equipped for governance at high altitude. Who needs to touch the ground when you can run a country from the clouds? But perhaps the most impressive aspect of Qatar Amiri flight is how it strengthens Qatar's position on the international stage. Being able to travel at a moment's notice allows the royal family to respond to crises, attend high-profile summits, or forge strategic alliances efficiently. It's not just about luxury. It's about power and influence on a global scale. The fleet includes some of the most modern aircraft in existence, such as three Boeing 747, eight jets and a variety of Airbus models. Each one is a marvel of engineering and luxury, designed to cater to every whim of its royal passengers. Mansions beyond imagination. Now that we've seen how the King of Qatar travels in style, let's take a peek inside the places he calls home. These aren't just houses, they're palaces that make Buckingham look like a quaint cottage. The royal residences of Qatar are monuments to excess, where gold isn't just an accent color, it's a design philosophy. First up is the Doha Royal Palace, the main crib of the Al Thani family. This place isn't just big, it's massive. We're talking about a complex valued at $1 billion. That's right, billion with a B. This isn't just one palace, it's 15 palaces all tucked behind golden walls. The car park alone can fit over 500 vehicles. Imagine trying to remember where you parked in that lot. Each of these 15 palaces within the complex is a masterpiece in its own right. The halls have seen more world leaders than the United Nations. But it's not just about the guest list. The luxury here goes beyond the obvious gold and marble. There's something in the air, a sense of majesty that you can't buy at your local home improvement store. But the royal family doesn't limit themselves to just one country. They've got their sights set on prime real estate across the globe. Take London, for example. In 2013, one of the former Amir's wives decided she needed a little pied de terre in the heart of the city. So naturally, she bought three houses in Cornwall Terrace, Regent Park. But these weren't just any houses. The plan was to merge them into one super mansion. This London pad isn't your average fixer-upper. We're talking 17 bedrooms, 14 lounges, a private cinema, a juice bar, and an indoor swimming pool. Because who doesn't need a juice bar in their house? This little renovation project set the family back a cool $140 million. That's more than most of us will see in several lifetimes. But the Althani family doesn't stop there. 
Their real estate portfolio reads like a wish list of dream homes. We're talking private beaches, helipads, marble halls and gold ceilings. Each property is like a time capsule of royal heritage, showcasing their status among the world's elite. And let's not forget about the Amiri Diwan Palace in the heart of Doha. This isn't just a home, it's the administrative headquarters of the entire state. It's where the current Amir, Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, lives with his three wives and 13 children. Talk about a full house. The sheer scale of these properties is mind-boggling. It's not just about the number of rooms or the precious materials used. It's about the statement these mansions make. They're not just homes, they're power moves. Each property is a strategic asset, enhancing the family's already enormous empire. In the world of the ultra-wealthy, a house isn't just a place to live. It's a canvas for showcasing your wealth, power and influence. And when it comes to the King of Qatar, that canvas stretches across continents, each brushstroke worth millions. It's a lifestyle that's hard to imagine, where the word home takes on a whole new meaning. A day in the life of Qatari royalty. We've seen the king's incredible possessions, but what about his daily life? You might think royalty wakes up to the sound of golden trumpets, but the reality is a bit different. The Emir of Qatar starts his day like many world leaders, with a comprehensive security briefing. But that's where the similarities to your average Joe's morning routine end. After ensuring the safety of his family and nation, the Emir's day kicks into high gear. While you're stuck in rush hour traffic, he's likely being chauffeured in one of his luxury cars or even taking a quick helicopter ride to avoid the commute altogether. Talk about beating the morning rush. Next up on the Royal Agenda, meetings with high-ranking officials to discuss economic policies, international relations and domestic affairs. But these aren't your typical boardroom meetings. Picture ornate chambers adorned with priceless artwork where decisions that could impact millions are made over cups of the world's finest coffee. Lunch for the Emir isn't a sad desk salad or a quick sandwich. It's a culinary experience prepared by world-class chefs using ingredients that probably cost more than your monthly grocery budget. And forget about a vending machine snack break, the Emir has personal assistants catering to his every whim. The afternoon might see the Emir hosting foreign dignitaries in his opulent palace. While you're answering emails, he's shaping international relations and potentially brokering multi-billion dollar deals. Just another day at the office, right? But it's not all work and no play for Qatari royalty. Leisure time for the Emir could involve spending time on one of his super yachts, like the $500 million Al Lusoil. This floating palace features a spa, movie theater, beauty salon, barbecue area, gym, and multiple indoor pools. Your after-work Netflix binge suddenly seems a bit less exciting, doesn't it? The Al Lusal isn't just big, it's massive. It can accommodate 36 guests and requires a crew of 56 people to run smoothly. That's right. The Emir's yacht has a larger staff than most small businesses. Evening entertainment for the royal family often involves showcasing their impressive art collection. The Emir's daughter, Al Mayasa bin Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, heads the Qatar Museum's authority with an annual budget of $250 million for art acquisitions. Your occasional museum visit pales in comparison to living among masterpieces worth millions. As night falls and you're winding down, the Emir might be attending a state dinner or diplomatic event. These aren't your average dinner parties. They're lavish affairs where the futures of nations can be decided over dessert. Parties that make Gatsby blush. Now that we've seen how the King of Qatar lives day to day, let's talk about how he parties. Because when you're one of the wealthiest people on the planet, you don't just throw any old shindig. We're talking about events that make the great Gatsby look like he was hosting a backyard barbecue. The Qatari royal family doesn't do things by halves when it comes to celebrations. Their parties are legendary affairs that most of us can only dream about attending. Imagine walking into a room where the champagne never stops flowing, where world-famous celebrities mingle with royalty, and where the entertainment costs more than most people's houses. These aren't just parties, they're spectacles, events that cost millions of dollars and take months to plan. The King's 50th birthday bash, for example, reportedly set him back a cool $27 million. That's right, $27 million for a single night of celebration. To put that in perspective, that's more than the annual GDP of some small island nations. But what exactly does $27 million get you in terms of party planning? Well, for starters, it gets you performances by some of the biggest names in the music industry. We're talking about artists who normally sell out stadiums performing in your living room, or in this case, your palatial ballroom. The guest lists for these events read like a who's who of the global elite. You've got royalty from other nations rubbing shoulders with Hollywood A-listers, tech billionaires chatting with world-famous athletes, 
and political powerhouses making small talk with supermodels. It's a gathering of people so influential that the decisions made over cocktails could shape the course of nations. And let's talk about those cocktails for a moment. The drinks at these parties aren't just top shelf, they're the kind of rare aged spirits that most people never even get to see, let alone taste. The same goes for the food. We're not talking about your standard canapes here, these are gourmet meals prepared by world-renowned chefs, each dish a work of art in itself. But the extravagance doesn't stop at the food and drink. The decorations for these events are out of this world. Imagine rooms transformed into fantasy landscapes, with ice sculptures that could pass for modern art and floral arrangements that look like they've been plucked from the gardens of Eden. Security at these events is tighter than Fort Knox. With so many high-profile guests in one place, the King reportedly has up to 100 bodyguards on duty. That's a small army dedicated to making sure the party goes off without a hitch. The venues for these bashes are equally impressive. Sometimes they're held in grand palaces, other times on super yachts that cost more than most people will earn in a lifetime. Occasionally, they even take place in purpose-built locations, constructed just for that one night of revelry. It's hard for most of us to even imagine this level of opulence. These aren't just parties, they're displays of wealth and power on a scale that's almost unimaginable. They're events that create buzz in the highest echelons of society, generating gossip and envy in equal measure. But here's the kicker. For the Qatari royal family, this is just another Tuesday. When you're sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars, throwing a multi-million dollar party is about as financially significant as the rest of us buying a round of drinks at the local bar. It's a reminder of just how vast the wealth gap is between the ultra-rich and the rest of us. While most people worry about making rent, the King of Qatar worries about whether his party has enough gold leaf desserts or if the private fireworks display is impressive enough. The Royal Art Collection. From supercars and private islands, let's turn our attention to a different kind of luxury. One that hangs on the walls of the royal palaces. The King of Qatar's art collection isn't just a bunch of pretty pictures. It's a treasure trove that would make museum curators green with envy. The royal family's interest in art isn't just a hobby. It's a serious business, with an annual budget that would make most countries' entire cultural spending look like pocket change. We're talking about $250 million a year just for buying art. That's more than some blockbuster movies cost to make. But who's behind this massive art shopping spree? Meet Al Mayasa bint Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani, the Emir's daughter. She's not just any art collector. Forbes ranked her among the 100 most powerful women in the world. When Al Mayasa walks into an auction house, you can bet the art world sits up and takes notice. So what exactly does the royal family have hanging on their walls? Well, it's not just paintings. Their collection is a mishmash of everything from ancient Qurans to rare books, jewelry, and even 18th century French furniture. It's like they've got their own private Louvre, but with better air conditioning. One of the standout pieces in their collection is the Clive of India flask. This isn't just any old water bottle. The royal family dropped $5 million on this piece, signaling to the art world that they were serious players. That's right, $5 million for something you can't even drink out of anymore. But wait, there's more. Ever heard of Birds of America by James John Audubon? It was once the world's most expensive book, and you guessed it, the Qatari royal family owns it. They snagged it for a cool $8.8 .8 million. That's one expensive bird-watching guide. And let's not forget about the Fabergé egg they bought for $9.57 million. Because when you're royalty, why settle for chocolate eggs when you can have one made of precious metals and gemstones? Now you might be thinking, okay, they got some expensive knickknacks, so what? Well, here's the kicker. These are just a few examples from a collection that includes thousands of artworks worth billions of dollars. The exact value? Nobody knows for sure, but it's safe to say it's more than your average person will see in a hundred lifetimes. This isn't just about having pretty things to look at. The royal family's art collection is a power move. It's a way of flexing their cultural muscles on the world stage. By amassing this incredible collection, they've turned Doha into a rising star in the art world. It's not just oil that's putting Qatar on the map anymore. Investments fit for a king. We've seen the king's incredible toys and palaces, but what about the real money moves? When you're sitting on a mountain of cash, you don't just let it gather dust. The Qatari royal family has their fingers in more pies than you can count. And we're not talking about your grandma's apple pie. These are billion dollar pies that shape global markets. Let's start with the Qatar Investment Authority, or QIA for short. This isn't your average investment fund. With over $100 billion to play with, the QIA is like a giant monopoly player. 
but instead of little green houses, they're buying real-world properties and businesses. And they're not just window shopping, they're making serious purchases that would make most billionaires feel like they're working with monopoly money. Take Harrods, for example. You know that fancy department store in London where a pair of socks probably costs more than your entire wardrobe? Well, the QIA decided they liked it so much, they bought the whole thing for £1.5 billion, that's right, billion with a B, and they didn't stop there. They also snatched up the Printemps department store in Paris. Because why have one luxury shopping destination when you can have two? But the royal family's shopping spree doesn't end with retail. They've got a taste for sports too. The Emir himself owns Paris Saint-Germain FC, so while you're cheering for your local team, he's watching a world-class soccer club that he actually owns. Talk about taking your love for the game to the next level. Now let's talk about cars. Not the ones in the royal garage, but the ones they partially own. The QIA has a stake in Porsche, so every time someone revs up one of those sleek German machines, a little bit of that money is heading straight to Qatar. They've also got their hands in other big names like Credit Suisse and Barclays, banking, cars, retail, is there anything they don't invest in? But wait, there's more. Ever heard of the Shard? That pointy building in London that looks like it's trying to poke a hole in the sky? Yeah, Qatar owns that too. And the Intercontinental London Park Lane Hotel and the London Olympic Village. It's like they're playing real-life Monopoly with the British capital. And they're not just limited to Europe. In Cannes, they own the Majestic Hotel, the Grand Hyatt Cannes Hotel Martinez, and the Carlton Hotel. So while you're saving up for a vacation, they're collecting hotels like their Pokemon cards. But perhaps the most ambitious project is right at home, the Pearl Qatar. This isn't just a building or a hotel, it's an entire artificial island spanning nearly 4 million square meters. It's like they looked at Dubai and said, hold my non-alcoholic beer. The impact of these investments isn't just about making money, it's about power and influence on a global scale. When Qatar speaks, the world listens, not just because of their oil, but because they've got their hands in so many pockets around the world. From the clothes you wear to the hotels you stay in to the banks that hold your money, there's a good chance the Qatari royal family is involved somewhere along the line. Hidden gems, lesser known luxuries. We've seen the flashy cars, the mega yachts and the private jets, but what about the hidden treasures that don't make the headlines? When you're as wealthy as the King of Qatar, your collection of luxuries goes far beyond what meets the eye. Let's peek behind the curtain and explore some of the lesser-known indulgences that even the most seasoned luxury enthusiasts might find surprising. While most of us struggle to keep our houseplants alive, the King of Qatar has taken gardening to a whole new level. Hidden away in one of his many properties is a climate-controlled underground garden that would make Mother Nature herself green with envy. This subterranean paradise isn't just a hobby, it's a multi-million dollar project designed to grow rare and exotic plants that can't survive in Qatar's harsh desert climate. Imagine walking through a lush tropical rainforest, then remembering you're actually beneath the scorching sands of the Middle East. That's the kind of luxury that money, and a lot of it, can buy. But plants aren't the only things the king likes to collect. While some people might have a favorite pen or two, the royal family has an entire museum dedicated to writing instruments. We're not talking about your run-of-the-mill ballpoints here. This collection includes pens made from meteorites, adorned with diamonds, and even some that once belonged to historical figures. It's like a history lesson and a jewelry store had a baby and that baby was really into calligraphy. Speaking of unusual collections, let's talk about the king's fascination with time. No, not just expensive watches, although he has plenty of those too. The royal family owns a collection of ancient sundials and other timekeeping devices that span centuries of human innovation. It's like they're not content with just owning the present. They want a piece of the past, too. But perhaps the most surprising item in the king's collection of hidden luxuries is his personal ice rink. Yes, you read that right. An ice rink in the middle of the desert. While most people in Qatar are trying to escape the heat, the king can strap on a pair of skates and pretend he's in the Winter Olympics. It's not just any ice rink, either. It's an exact replica of the one used in the 1980 Miracle on Ice game where the US hockey team defeated the Soviet Union. Talk about a Cold War. And let's not forget about the King's passion for falconry. While many wealthy individuals might own a few exotic pets, the King of Qatar has taken it to another level with a state-of-the-art falconry center. This facility isn't just a place to keep birds. It's a high-tech breeding and training center equipped with the latest veterinary technology. It's like a five-star hotel for falcons, complete with custom-designed perches and a menu that would make most humans jealous. But perhaps the most unexpected luxury in the king's collection is something you can't see or touch. 
The royal family owns the rights to a unique fragrance that's so exclusive it's never been released to the public. Created by a master perfumer using some of the rarest ingredients on earth, this scent is said to be worth millions. It's the ultimate status symbol, a luxury that only the king and his closest confidants will ever experience. From underground gardens to ice rinks in the desert, the King of Qatar's collection of hidden luxuries proves that when you have billions to spend, your imagination is the only limit. These lesser-known indulgences offer a glimpse into a world where even the most outlandish desires can become reality. It's a lifestyle that most of us can barely comprehend, let alone aspire to. But hey, a little window shopping never hurt anyone, right?